Editor's Note Welcome, seekers and bringers of truth. Today, we explore the infinite power of possibility thinking. As we journey through life, we encounter moments that call us to pause and reflect. Are we merely spectators, watching life pass us by? Or are we actively embracing the magnificent possibilities that lie before us? In this transformative message, Commander Hatton challenges us to break free from the shackles of doubt, fear, and complacency, urging us to unlock the boundless potential within. Inspired by Dr. Robert Schiller's timeless principles of possibility thinking, this message is more than a philosophy. It is a practical roadmap for aligning with universal truth. It invites us to cultivate the divine seeds of creativity within, transforming them into actionable ideas that flourish even amidst adversity, limitation, and resistance. Prepare to be inspired, confronted, and uplifted as we explore the Ten Commandments of Possibility Thinking. These aren't mere rules, they are profound truths that challenge the status quo, shatter perceived limitations, and transform impossibilities into realities. Through them, you'll gain the tools to create, innovate, and thrive, regardless of the obstacles before you. The journey of growth, faith, and action begins now. Step boldly into the narrative of possibility. The time to create your reality is here. 10 Commandments of Possibility Thinking The 24th of May 1997 Number 1 Hatton Just as you might go forth and look into the heavens to see what the weather might be, Look at life passing on by and be sure you don't miss the wonderful possibilities that might be awaiting your grasping. Remember that God sends his greatest blessings and most wondrous things in silence. How often do you hear a flower bloom? Do you hear the tree growing? Ah, but you do find the laying of an egg for the farmer's basket. Do you want to find the glory of God or simply lay a bunch of eggs? I have been asked to write this morning on deals with China and the United States along with some commentary as to who and why there is such an engine to China other than the return of Hong Kong next month. But, I find my own scribe needing some reminders that life is what we make it to be, and if you are not out of step then check the feet of the others claiming to be marching with you. Make sure you are in step with truth and that which is right and never mind the dropouts from this band of instrumentalists, or marching to different drummers, and yet claiming to march to God's pulse wave of universal absolutes. So, I dedicate the following to Dharma and hope that the rest of you readers would consider carefully where you might fit into the pattern of human aspects at work. The entire dissertation is offered in great respect to the father of possibility thinking, Dr. Robert Schiller. The ideas are not new, they are timeless, but he does have a way of wording ideas, so that they can be utilized in your own private action focus. But, before I begin, I might suggest that some of our writings begin to be about individual experiences along the way, for family sharing is the only way to present family caring. How often do you turn to the most irrational alternatives in very simple circumstances? Dharma, for instance, is not improved health-wise to any great extent. And worse, all the fixers have overloaded her with every new idea that comes along, but to no avail save breaking out in grims and rashes and pickling her innards. Disease is negative energy at work, jealous, every time. But the symptoms are, and certainly, they are, right here, to the point of not being able to carry on a conversation or paint a house. Can't speak. Then we don't have meetings until she can hold enough air to speak for me. Can't run the 200 meter dash. Then don't run anywhere. And what is the purple lipstick bit? That is not lipstick or silver, my dear. That is called cyanosis. 
The heart is failing as the congestion worsens and you simply are not getting enough oxygen to do more than huff and puff. Ah, but can you tap the keys on the keyboard? Then, why do we take this worst of times to clean the attic, sort the closets, and these other things gone now for a decade without attention? Why do we not just write and tap the keys until those proverbial cows come home and heal self? I just might even have some interesting things to share with you, and our brother through this time of physical disability. After all, the assaulters can't assault that which they cannot find, now can they? So, we are asked over and over again, but what does Dummer do, or EJ do? or it do, when the going is such a burden as to want to get off. This holds true for every person doing anything. You will find that some will march right on through an analytical exception, but most have to have some type of inspirational boost to refuel enough to keep right on keeping on. Lots of you share your inspirational thoughts with us so that we know we are all thinking on the same track, and do not derail our train. Some find some tapes from teachers, guides, and philosophy speakers, both current and ancient. Truth is truth is truth. Dharma does have one point that brings distress to everyone around her. Why more writing when some 50 volumes are waiting for printing, and no way to get it done? What difference does it make? There are enough for everyone to spend a couple of years reading. So what else is new? How many of you out there know that the deals made in China so impact your nation, and all nations as to boggle the minds of mortal man, and also threaten Henry Kissinger? No big deal. Oh yes indeed, a very big deal. As your mind bogs into the inability to sort, prioritize, and simply evaluate each thing against such as possibility of alternatives, I must remind you that this is the way to accomplish goals. Put information into the mind, leave it sought against, yes, even the Ten Commandments of Possibility Thinking, share, converse, brainstorm and find you do have the answers, you just needed to remember them. What are those Ten Commandments? Well, with great appreciation to Dr. Schiller for placing them in order for our convenience, let's run through them briefly through excerpts from some of his writings and lectures. The point of course, as usual, begins and ends with an idea. Ideas are thoughts given to the mind by God who is mind and is thought. I will list them in quoted format, but not totally, so please know that we are repeating but not taking time to offer the entire messages. Paraphrased quoting. 1. Never reject a possibility because you see something wrong with it. There is something wrong with every good idea. Any time God gives you an idea, you can find some negative aspect to it. It's amazing how people sit in a deliberating meeting, and respond to an opportunity, only by finding fault with it. Don't throw away a suggestion when you see a problem. Instead, isolate the negative from the possibility. Neutralize the negative. Exploit the possibility and sublimate the negative. Don't ever let negatives kill the positive potential that is within an opportunity. Nothing is impossible if you will hold on to the idea that it might become possible somehow, some way, with someone's help. Two. Never reject a possibility because you won't get the credit. God can do tremendous things through the person who doesn't care who gets the credit. Years ago, I met a man who was president and chairman of the board of a company in Minneapolis. The company had made the first huge balloon satellite, one that moved across the night sky like a star. It was a successful step in the early stages of the space program. I said to the president, excuse me for saying this, but I've never heard of your name or your company. He replied, maybe not. We didn't get the credit, 
but we got the contract. Don't worry about getting the credit. If you do, you'll become ego involved in the decision making moments of life. Decisions must never be based on ego needs. They must be based on human needs and market pressures that transcend your own desires. Decide today, would you rather satisfy your ego, or enjoy the fruit of success? 3. Never reject an idea because it's impossible. Almost every great idea is impossible when it is first born. The greatest ideas today are yet impossible. Possibility thinkers take great ideas and turn the impossibilities into possibilities. That's progress. The important issue is whether or not the idea is a good one. Would it help people who are hurting? Would it be a great thing for our country and our world? If so, then develop a way to achieve what today is impossible. 4. Never reject a possibility because your mind is already made up. I'm sure you've heard the saying, don't confuse me with the facts, my mind is already made up. Hatton, this brings up a memory of nasty days and Judge Jason Brent. Judge Brent came forth in his black robes and in a bellowing tone of voice, at an echo hearing on the property case, and opened the court session with, I will not hear any facts, I will give you my ruling. He set about calling the echoes flakes, transient bums, and made them responsible in open court for the whole of the savings and loan debacle. Almost a decade later, the case, surely as promised, is about the corrupt judicial system, and goes all the way up the line of participants in corruption to the last three presidents and their guilty associates who have destroyed, with your aid and abetting, the United States of America. I've, continues Dr. Schiller, had to change my mind publicly more than once. People who never change their minds are either perfect or stubborn. I'm not perfect and neither are you. I'd rather change plans while still in port than to set sail and sink at sea. Hatton, smart captain. 5. Never reject an idea because it's illegal. Hatton, wow, and over and over I have shouted that we will never do anything illegal, immoral, or even remotely stretching the laws of land or God. That does not preclude seeing what laws are all about, and who, and why they have been brought into being the law of the land. God's laws never change. We speak here of ideas and laws not doing in laws. Listen carefully, or you'll misinterpret this commandment. Some of the greatest ideas are impossible because they are illegal today. You should never violate the law, but don't reject an idea because it's illegal. You might be able to get the law changed. Hatton, check out those laws and see if they actually do exist to stop you from your appointed task or see if they might be changed. Often you will find that the change of the law in the first place, is a pure fabrication, with only media to blame for acceptance. A lot of laws, however, on the books today certainly need changing or defeating. 6. Never reject an idea because you don't have the money, manpower, muscle, or months to achieve it. All it takes to accomplish the impossible is mind power, man power, money power, muscle power, and month power. Hatton, which ones of these don't you have? Spend enough time, use enough energy, develop enough human resources, acquire enough financial capital, and you can do almost anything. Hatton, ah, but you don't have these things. Why? Who should or would do it for you? Why? Don't reject an idea just because you don't have the necessary power. Commit to do what's great, then solve the problems. A super successful person has very few resources, except the capacity to take an idea and marshal stronger and smarter people around him to pull it off. 
Hatton. If you expect people to always do the thinking and the producing, where is your special interest and reward? If you dump your load on someone else and yet claim participation, how much reward do you really deserve? Are there truly free lunches if you just hang around long enough? No, in fact, by doing nothing, you will find no lunch at all. 7. Never reject an idea because it will create conflict. The longer I've studied possibility thinking, the more I've come to one conclusion. You can never develop a possibility without creating problems. You can never establish a goal without generating a new set of tensions. You can never make a commitment without producing some conflict. Every idea worth anything is bound to be rejected by people who don't go along with it. To reject an idea because it may generate conflict is to surrender leadership to friends or foes. 8. Never reject an idea because it's not your way of doing things. Learn to accommodate. Prepare to compromise. Plan to adjust. A different style, a new policy, a change in tradition, all are opportunities to grow. Get set to compromise. Learn to be equilibristic. Maintain a balance between the tension, or an opportunity that demands exploitation, and the limitations of the resources available at the moment. Readjust your budget. Compromise your taste. Accommodate your lifestyle. You may have to decide, it's more important to succeed than it is to snobbishly adhere to my private tastes. 9. Never reject an idea because it might fail. Every idea worth anything has failure potential within it. There is risk in everything. One thing the United States needs more than anything today is possibility thinking. Our problem in this country, Hatton, and in every country, is with management, labor, and consumers. Consumers are told that if there is anything wrong with a product, don't buy it. And if you do buy it, sue the company. Labor has its problems. Management has its problems. I don't think there is anything worse than the no-risk mentality we have in America. If Jesus Christ had operated that way, he would never have died on the cross. The whole principle of faith means you're prepared to make a supreme sacrifice for the greater good of other persons. There can be no assurance until that happens. Success is never certain, and failure is never a final. You never reject an idea because there's some risk involved. You isolate the risk, insulate it, and eventually eliminate it. 10. Never reject an idea because it's sure to succeed. There are people today who back off if they are sure they will succeed. One reason is that these persons begin to imagine the ego of fulfillment this success would give, and with an excuse of being humble, they pull out. To all of my fellow Christians, trying to follow Christ, who say, I should not try to be successful. I'm not trying for the top of the ladder. That's vanity. That's materialistic. I must say, that's not true. To choose poverty instead of prosperity, failure instead of success, low achievement instead of top of the ladder achievement, simply for the sake of being humble, is not super Christian. It's dumb. Only successful people can help people who are failing. Only winners will survive to give food to the hungry. The Ten Commandments for Possibility Thinkers Where do I get them? All ten come from Christ the world's greatest possibility thinker. He said, If you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Matthew 17:20. End of paraphrased quote. Thank you, sir, for reminding us of our own inner lessons this day. We cannot succeed if we don't proceed and we cannot win if we do not begin.
we have input to deny the goodly outcome of the ones we have and we, therefore, get to the point of lack of desire to share either of the ideas, or the success reaped by the intentional, and in the face of diversity, accomplishment of same. Don't tell us something will never work and then hold up thine hand for the rewards, when we go forth and make it work. We, in this place, may well seem outrageous but, where else are you going to learn that you are creators? You must create to be recognized as a creator. If you continue to stop in the middle of each new and wondrous possibility of creation you pronounce your deception on self. If you stop short of finishing your promised commitment to our mission, you tell on self and bring negative focus to us. What will happen, friends, is that when you dump your negative energy onto the heads of the very ones making sure we create the proper things and needs for this mission, you sign your own destiny with them. They cannot create from negative energy, only from lighted and positive energy, can we have what is necessary for us to accomplish that which we have come to accomplish. These ones are worn away at negative prattle, and binding choices of those in charge of certain aspects of that which is representing success. Further, if the shoes fit, wear them. Every day we have ones come forth, and proclaim their 24-hour-a-day service under all and any conditions. Then they fold their tentlets, and go away proclaiming that somehow we have failed them for their own lack of creative production. If I have to think the idea, do the deed, produce the participants for you, and then do the work, why should I give the results and rewards to you? I am continually offered 10%, or even 25% of the winnings of the lottery, if I, will just give the winning numbers. Why would I do that? If I can give the winning numbers, why would I not use them and get the whole of the winning pot? Do you stop to really consider your offers to God? You promise all sorts of things if God will just. God does not need all sorts of things. He doesn't even want those things and you don't keep your promise past the incident in focus, so why should God? Worse, people come, take, and then drop out, turn away, etc. And then what? Well, of course, in their own failures, they turn on the ones who did not turn from the pathway of righteousness. This is as old an action as mankind itself. Any time you feel compelled to tear another down in order to feel better or good about self and cause others to be misinformed by your deeds and words, you have just, forever, ruined your reputation. Speaking ill of others does not make you look better, it makes you look absolutely the fool you are. A zillion lies will not make one truth. There is often humor in things you least suspect as being the least bit funny. We can look right here, again, for example. Doris aka, Dharma, goes about realizing that any moment may be her last in this dwelling, for it has been stolen from her, sold out from under her, and therefore her expectation of never settling in permanently has become her mode of action. She keeps partially packed for moving at all times since she moved in, in 1987. Then there are the boxes. She hoards boxes in the attic, inside one another or piled all over, in case she needs them for moving. Well, yesterday friends pulled out all the empty boxes and today she is having to be sent to the basement, to stop her from carting her boxes back into the attic. But, she says, if I keep those boxes for moving, I, perhaps, won't have to move. No, if you create the goal of not needing to move, you won't need the boxes or concern over the possibilities. If moving is unacceptable as an alternative, then you will create a way in which you have the cake and get rid of the boxes as well. Ah, but she goes further, she is now packing old things in clear plastic, so that whoever has to clean up after her death can just take it to the goodwill. 
I can't see what is magical about that attitude. Why not just take it to the goodwill now? Oh, I see. You might need the things that no longer fit anybody around for a survival. When will you, Dharma, think abundance instead of survival? You prepare for survival and abundance and you won't have the problem of old things, will you? Another thing that becomes evident around these parts is to let Hatton. We write and write and remind and support, while you do whatever you wanted to do in the first place, just let Hatton. Well, Hatton is doing every day while you make other plans, my dears. You will find any excuse to postpone the simple task of thinking about what you need, and how to accomplish the mission. You will go do this or that, that has nothing to do with anything relative to your own at ancient task, and then wonder why you don't have abundance spewing out your ears. So be it, for until you take initiative on your own behalf, you keep others from receiving their own abundance for their labors. I get so weary of you people attending over and over and over the dead dogs, the unimportant things, while surviving in that which will not sustain or maintain or even have desirable outcome. You seek and find excuses and then argue that the actions have reason. No, you look for that which postpones taking positive action in the wallowing in the dust of excuses, for whatever you want to do while you are putting off getting your job done. You do not want to succeed, you want somebody else to succeed and give you the abundance without limitation or merit. Is this the justness of God? No. Hard labor does not make for success, but it often helps accomplish things. Creation is to take that which is, turn it into that which is for your use in a form unlimited and brilliant in concept. Why do you kick and move? move and kick the dead dogs, while all you have to do is get a new live pup. Have you noted the way a group or a body of something begins to die and decay when the energy is removed from it? You can look at a house, even, and know when it has occupants, life, or is simply a vacant building. As we have had to withdraw from public tabloid media attacks, and Doris has been unable to speak, have you noted the death feel of the areas once bursting and alive? Ones here are having to move along on what all of you, out there have only had since the beginning, the word of truth. For those who believe and have faith in me as in God, you will prevail, succeed and move mountains because you know that you will do so. The ones destined to failure are convinced of their own ability, to fail, and shall do so. It is the law of universal giving and receiving. I constantly get expressions of I just don't get ideas for, or, well, I just don't hear him. This is BS, you don't want to hear or you would hear. Ideas placed into the mind will demand and compel the answer to their fulfillment. If you can't gain some of your own methods of creation, you are lying to self. You want Doris to go right? Why don't you go right and while you are at it, create the desired response? I am not interested in more dissertations on inner peace. Leave that to the choppers and the shallers. You need to focus on the task at hand and do something. Write someone. Get on with creating and coverage. For that which is newly birthed, give that baby a name, a heritage and reality in truth. Enough for this sitting, for I realize I give you too much to digest, and then you utilize nothing which claiming you forgot or well, I guess I didn't see that and thus and so. When you get your focus straight and are ready to create, we can get on with getting on, and I, for one, am tired of the strangulation and stagnation. Salu. Source. Contact, The Phoenix Project, the 27th of May, 1997, Volume 17, Number 1, pages 17 to 19. Editor's Note, to all my listeners and viewers.
Please check the description section of this video for the source, reference links and additional info. From there, you will also have access to the Phoenix journals, which were banned by the U.S. government, along with the initial set of foundational Phoenix journals recommended by Commander Hatton to read, reread, and study first. The journals serve to unravel and clarify the many lies, tamperings, and misconceptions foisted upon the masses by those who seek to control the thoughts, perceptions, and actions of others from generation to generation, especially those concerning the true Christed life teachings of Isu Emmanuel Jesus Sananda. For uninformed readers, the new name and title of Sananda represents an earned level of utmost respect and achievement for the accomplished and highly revered master teacher, meaning one with God. In fact, even your mistranslated and tampered with Bibles mention that he would have a new name upon his return. The Phoenix journals are the word of truth bestowed upon mankind by the higher realms of light during this most critical time in Earth's evolution, unto a higher dimension. Please like, share and subscribe to help support this channel, and as always have a wonderful day. In love and light. Thank you.